Alright, today we're going to go over uh, at least one other JavaScript example and uh, possibly a couple others. And uh, Wednesday um, will be a work day. Oops, I'm sorry, Wednesday will be a no class day because we have class Tuesday and Thursday. Thursday will be a work day for your final project. So don't come here, come to go directly to BU202. And it'll be a chance for you to get any questions answered about your project, to show what you have accomplished to other people in the class, to get some ideas off them as you're finishing up your project, and so on. So more JavaScript examples today, um, tomorrow, or Wednesday, Thursday. You think I know the schedule by now. Thursday um, will be a, a work day for the, the final project. Yeah, just do whatever day it says on Canvas. <laughs> we can look it up now. But here, you, you can't trust me to even have the right day of the week for our class. How are you going to trust me to remember the day that it's due? So let's look that up. is due May 10th, actually. And we have the portfolio due this week as well. All right. Um, let's do an example of a menu similar to the menu that we saw on ESPN. Whereas you put your mouse on something, change the menu. It's not cool to do that part way through the semester. Oh no, there it is. No, well, it's not. Oh, here it is. We did change the menu. I'll be darned. <laughs> yeah, as long as I'll remember. Well, you can go back to the video uh, to do that. Um, at any rate, we're going to do something similar to that. So let me go and open up Notepad++. And we're going to build this a piece at a time. Remember that on a web page, on a typical web page, you have three things, three languages that work together. Each one of them brings something to the party. All right. HTML is the content. CSS is the appearance. And then finally, JavaScript I would describe as the behavior or the interactivity. Either of those two words roughly means the same in this context. So we're going to build it a piece at a time. I'm going to build the content first, which will be uh, a series of links followed by a submenu for each of the links. More than likely this will be in a nav section. Now you may wonder why is it important to put it in a nav section? Would we absolutely have to make it in a nav, sec nav section? And the answer is no, we wouldn't absolutely have to do that. It just makes things a lot more convenient. Uh, because then we can put styles, different styles on the nav section and uh, we're doing a better job describing what our web page is, how our web page is structured, and what each piece of the web page means. 
So it's a good idea to put things like this in the nav section. So I'll put the nav section up here. And I will put a UL, because again, that's typically what we do for our navigation, have a list, an unordered list of links. And I am not going to make a hundred different web pages, so I will just have them link to pound sign which, you know, is back to the top of the page. So you'd actually put the correct URL in there. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to put everything um, as a link to the top of the page. So href equals pound sign. menu item 1, menu item 2, menu item 3, and so on. Maybe. For each of these, I'm going to have a submenu. And I have a pretty good idea I'm going to need some IDs in here, so I'm going to put them in the start. So I'll put ID equals main menu. For my first submenu, So, like, maybe this would be um, basketball. The choices might be NBA, WNBA, college, the sub-menu underneath it. All right? So, for every menu option, there's going to be a sub-menu. So, this is sub-menu 1. And this is submenu one, item one. Submenu one, item two. Submenu one, item three. And we'll have two other submenus as well. So this is the HTML part of it. Remember, we're going to do the three things. The HTML, which is the content. The CSS, which is the appearance. And the JavaScript, which is the behavior. So if I view this just as it is, I go to save it. And I save it as an HTML document. What I get looks like this. You can see all the menus, the main menu and the sub menus. All right? So the content is there. Remember, with things like this, with things with client-side scripting, frequently we send more content to the page than initially appears. So initially, we're just going to want the main menu to appear. Uh, later on, we're going to want the submenus to appear. All right, when they put their mouse over the main menu item. All right, so we got this. All right. Now, 
how do we want this to look? And I'm going to turn off the screen. Actually, I'm just going to raise the screen for a minute. We could do this a bunch of different ways, right? But the way that I'm going to do it will be like this. We're going to want the main menu to be stretched out horizontally. And the submenus to appear underneath like this. Alright, when the user puts their mouse over this menu. So when the user puts their mouse over this, this will appear. When they remove their mouse from it, that will disappear. When the user puts their mouse over this, this will appear. All right, so at most, one of those submenus will be showing at a time. And sometimes, none of the submenus will be showing. All right? So that's kind of how we want it to look. So we can do that with CSS. All right? And I'm going to start off by, and I'm, again, for simplicity, I'm going to put all my style code in this page. I'm going to say all my ULs in the nav section, I don't want to have bullet points. So list style type none. I want them to be oriented horizontally. So, any LI contained in the main menu, I want to have a display type. inline block. Remember, by default, LIs are a block tag, which means they, by default, they get stacked up on top of each other. All right? We don't want that, though. We want, we want, um, we want those to be, um, stacked horizontally. So let's see what we got with this. All right. We're moving in the right direction. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the width of these to some number. Two hundred pixels to give them all a uniform width. All right. So now they're spread out over across the screen. All right.
would make the, ma the nav be a minimum of 700 pixels wide. And I'm going to make the width of the main menu fill up 100% and float it to the left. We'll see why I'm doing that in a couple minutes. So this is what we have. All right. So now what I want is I want the submenus to be right underneath the appropriate main menu. So right now, submenu 1 looks right underneath menu item 1. But sub 2 is down here, sub 3 is down here. The reason for that is if I put my mouse over menu 3, I want submenu 3 to pop up, but I don't want it to pop up way over there, right? Because if I make it pop up over there, by the time I move my mouse to get over there, it's going to disappear, all right? And uh, therefore, I want it right underneath. So if I move down, it'll keep it appearing so the user can click on it. Now, just to help me understand this and visualize this, I'm going to put around every UL a border. That will help me actually see where one starts and the other ends. All right. See, this goes there. We see this one goes all the way around it. See this one and this one. All right. So now I'm going to try to make these three submenus go directly underneath that. So there's notice I use an ID for the main menu. That's because there's only one main menu, right? And there's only one thing that's ever going to be the main menu on my page. So I can use an ID. Submenus, I might have multiple submenus. I have three in this case right here. So I'm going to use a class instead. I have an ID because I might need that for JavaScript, but I'm also going to use a class. And I'm going to say a class of submenu. So I have my three things have a class of submenu. I'm now going to give a style to the <coughs> submenu. issues with this. Alright. Number one, there's a gap between the main menu and the sub menu. Alright. How can we get rid of that gap? <coughs> so, I'm going to put on the sub menu margin <coughs> 0 px and I'm going to put on the main menu, margin 0px. Alright, that 
moves everything up and together. All right? The only thing that I see that's an issue is that these actually get a little bit off each time. So I'm going to try making the width 190. not really sure why those don't line up, but I know how to fix it, which is just as good. Alright, that looks pretty even. So I could probably now get rid of the borders, because the borders were mainly there just to help me line things up. Alright, I didn't really want them there. So I'm going to get rid of the borders. sure it still lines up. Seems to. I think it's off just a tiny bit. But I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Now, I want to use CSS to hide all the submenus. How do I make the submenus hide? Well, I have a class for submenu, right? So I can put my style rule on the class for submenu. I can hide it one of two ways. I can, split, I can say visibility hidden, or I can say display none. The difference between the two is that when you say visibility hidden, the submenus still take up their space. Let me show you what I mean. If that's my nav, and here's my header, those disappear by saying visibility hidden. Notice that doesn't move. Another way of saying that is even though those submenus are hidden, they still take up the space. All right, so they're not there, you can't see them, but that space is still sort of left for them in the layout. If, on the other hand, we say display none, then that jumps up a little bit because those don't take up any space. All right. Either one of those is a reasonable thing to do. It's not like one of them's right, one of them's wrong. It all just has to do with how you want to how you want your page to work. All right. I'm going to make it visibility hidden because I want to leave that space because I don't want the rest of my page jumping around. All right. All 
All right. So now I have to add, so, so now my HTML is set. So I have all the content that I need. And I have the initial settings for the CSS to be correct. So I have the CSS correct so that the appropriate things are showing, the things line up right, etc. What I have to do now is I have to put the behavior in. So I'm going to sort of build to this. All right, I'm not going to do it in one step. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to put an on mouse over. Equals for this guy. And I'm going to say document get element by ID. What is it that I want to do when I put the mouse over this? I want to show the first submenu. So when I, I want to find the thing that has an ID of submenu 1. So I'll say submenu 1. Find the thing on the page that has an ID of submenu 1. What do I want to do to that? I want to change the style of that. What do I want to change the style to? I'm going to set the visibility, visibility to visible. All right. So that's just one piece of it. All right. One tiny piece of this. So we're not there yet. All right, we're not even there with this first submenu. But if I go and view it now, put my mouse over it, put my mouse over it, and that menu appears. Notice the on mouse over was on the LI. So if I put it anywhere on the LI, it appears. If I wanted to put it only on the text, I could move my on mouse over to be on the link tag, not on the li tag. So, we're off, to, we're off to the races here. We got that working. Put my mouse over it, that appears. The problem is, is it doesn't disappear when I move my mouse off of it. So I have to put an on mouse out. And what do I want to do? I want to do just the opposite. I want to hide it again. So, first part of this is going to be the same. I want to point to that thing on the page that has an element, uh, the element that has an ID of submenu 1. I want to change its style. I want to change the visibility. But instead of making it visible, I want to change it back to hidden. on it, it shows. Take my mouse off of it, it disappears. Alright, pretty cool. Yes? So, like, if your mouse is on it and you go, like, down to one of the items, it stays there, right? <laughs> We'd like that, wouldn't we? But it doesn't do that yet, because we're not done yet. In other words, if we do this and move it down, it disappears right now the way it's written. Because on mouse over, it shows it. On mouse off, it makes it disappear. So we have to fix that. All right? Okay. I'm going to add this code to my other two main menu items.
my mouse over that, it's fine. So, so far, so good. So, I can show one of them at a time, and I can switch between them. However, as was mentioned, we have the exact same problem that was mentioned a minute ago. If you go to put your mouse down, boop, disappears. All right? What do you suppose we're going to do to make to fix that? Well, we're going to say, I'm going to put an on mouse over on this. Or actually, I'm sorry, we're going to put it on this UL. And on mouse over, make it visible, on mouse out, make it invisible. And we'll do that to each of the submenus. And notice what we're putting it. We're putting it on the UL. So if it goes anywhere on the submenu, this happens. Nice thing is, again, you can line up these attributes in whatever way makes most sense for you with white space. Now, put my mouse on that, I go down, it's visible. Take my mouse off. Visible. All right. And so on. <coughs> now, of course, we could style this to make this look better if we wanted to. Um, you know, we can make the text bigger or make the text different. We can do some hover effects on the links to make it change. Um, <coughs> let's do that.
change of color if it is a hover. over it as we go and hover it. I don't like how that's a little too big, so I'll change it to 1.1 in. Alright. What's cool about this, uh, what I like about this example is this example um, how do I want to save it? Um, this example um, combines and it shows the role of each of the components. If any of this was off, it would break, right? If I didn't have all the HTML, of course, it, it would break. If the HTML is wrong. If my CSS wasn't right, to have those things align properly, then it wouldn't work. Um, Finally, if my JavaScript wasn't right, it, it would work. So far, we've been playing around with just sort of one-liner JavaScript codes. You can actually write much more complicated JavaScript codes that we, code that we don't really have the time to go over in this class. Because uh, this class is more of an overview of, of exactly what the behavior of JavaScript is. So you can actually create, for those of you that have programmed in other languages, you can create JavaScript functions to do a bunch of stuff like validate a form, all right, or do something that is more complicated. One thing that's become popular uh, in the past several years is something called jQuery. Does anyone know what jQuery is? jQuery is a library of pre-written and predefined JavaScript functionality. It sort of sits on top of JavaScript. It's sort of souped up JavaScript. So someone created a whole bunch of pre-written functions and called it jQuery. And these functions are written in JavaScript and allow you to accomplish some of the things that you could do in JavaScript, but accomplish them much more easily. It's what's called sometimes a framework. In other words, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and, and do everything from scratch. There's a real cool resource uh, there's a real cool tool and resource called jQuery UI that allows you to add some really cool effects to your web page. For example, here's what's called an accordion widget. What this will allow you to do is sort of have like almost tabs on your web page. But instead of being tabs, you can click on and show only a section at a time. The code for this is real, real simple. Here's the code for it. <coughs> Here's the JavaScript code for it. It's a little cryptic to read, but it's pretty easy to use it. All right. Essentially what this is saying is make everything that has an ID of accordion behave like an accordion. So what has an ID of accordion? Well, this div does. And therefore, as long as there's a heading and a div underneath that, that will act like an accordion. Now, how do you make this magic happen? You have to include on your code some of the files from the jQuery UI people. That's what these are written here. Especially like these three. Code jQuery, code jQuery, code jQuery. What this is, is this is the jQuery library. This is a set of functions that someone developed and made available for anyone to use. So if you put those in the header of your page, <laughs> then you can take advantage of all this great jQuery functionality without having to code all, all the stuff yourself. One of your goals as a developer is, 
the old cliche, not reinventing the wheel. All right? In other words, if there's code that exists somewhere, you want to use it and you want to take advantage of it. And some of that code, this, you know, this is a little hard, you know, uh, for people to, to maybe appreciate initially, but this isn't like code that you're stealing from someone. This is code that people are giving to you. All right? So it's not like wrong to use this code. They developed these libraries to help themselves and everyone else in the world that develop web pages to do some things a lot simpler. There's always going to be challenges as a programmer. So don't worry about like, gee, you know, if you can do these things, why, why still have a job to, to write code? <clears throat> Every problem has its things that make that problem unique. But many problems in programming are problems that every programmer in the world has. Like, every programmer might want to have that accordion widget on their page. This makes it simple. So, in web development, there's jQuery. In server-side scripting, there's ASP.NET. Uh, in Android development, there's the Android software development kit. In iOS, there's the iOS software development kit, and so on. All these things are pre-written code that does some of the simple stuff for you, some of the fundamental stuff, so that you don't have to worry about that. And you can just worry about the tough part of your problem. Uh, some other examples. Um, a menu. Essentially, all that stuff that we just spent, what, 40 minutes writing. There's a menu that's very similar to this. In fact, we probably, by playing around with this, could make this menu look exactly like ours. And here's the code. They include the jQuery libraries. They set up stuff almost exactly like I did. And they simply say, well, okay, that thing that has an ID of menu, make it work like a menu. And it does its own thing. Select menu is... Oh, uh, stylable select element. Um, date picker. You can go and use a calendar. All right. Some of these things were done before HTML5. So, like, that feature is available in HTML5 now. There's some really cool things. Draggable and droppable. So you can actually, on a web page, create a section of the page that the user can drag around. And again, the theme of this is you got to include the jQuery libraries. You have a very simple lines of code, and that gives you this really cool functionality. So if you're looking at, to add something cool to your project or for, I think, the last lab or the portfolio, feel free to look at any of my jQuery, any of my uh, JavaScript examples or any of the jQuery examples. Any questions here? Remember, Thursday, and I finally got that right, is a work day for your project. It's a good idea. It's a good idea to show other people in the class the project that you've been working on. I, I would urge you to do that. I should, in fact, incorporate that in the assignment, that you have to get a couple of reviews from other students in the class. I think that would be a good idea. For one thing, believe me, grading is not fun, all right? But grading projects in this class typically is the most fun I have grading. Because people come up with some really beautiful websites, really good websites. So why should I be the only lucky one that gets to see all these websites? Show them to your classmates. And they can take that as inspiration of some of the things that they can do uh, that maybe they haven't thought of yet. And vice versa. You know, 
Um, I'm sure everyone on their site probably has a few things that are really great that they can show off and maybe inspire other people in the class. All right, that's all I had today. Um, I will unlock the lab, then I'll come back here and grab my files, and then I'll be back over there.